Well, a report out today says that some of our GPs are heading for burnout. They're emotionally exhausted. They're becoming depersonalised. I think that means, but I'm going to check in a moment, that demands on their time are so great that they're perhaps not as sensitive to their patients, to you, as they should be. They don't have the time, maybe, to care enough. I'll ask again. Does your doctor care? really care. I want your experiences today, good and bad, if you can. You know the drill, you know the show. We can't do it without you. If you can, 08459 311111. If you want to talk about this, your doctor. Text 81333, start your message with the word Oxford. And I'm Malcolm.Boyden at bbc.co.uk. Dr Peter Orton is the man who put this research together for BMJ Open. It's an online medical journal. And he joins me on the telephone now. Uh, Dr Peter, good morning. Good morning. So what have you discovered? Well, we discovered uh, in one of the biggest studies of GPs in the country, this was all doctors in Essex, 600 of them, we found one in two were emotionally exhausted, um, but more interesting that four out of ten were depersonalised. That's they become insensitive and unfeeling and become more callous towards people since taking the job. And exceptionally, we found also their feeling of positive evaluation accomplishment was only high in a third and was low in a third as well. Why, um, why is this, do you think? Um, well, I should say just this is one of the highest response we've had. Um, I think the, the job for family doctors has become increasingly difficult. They're often at the beginning of illness, complexes, ambiguity with presentations. They're out there in the community uh, seeing everything. Their role is extended as well. They're becoming much more responsible for team working, community care. There's increasing demands being pressed on them from organizational changes, inventions, uh, NHS changes of resources. And the whole thing is that increasing work in practices, they're finding it uh, more difficult to um, feel for it. I think the important thing we're asking is they care still. Despite all of this, we found that their performance was still maintained. They were still on stage performing. Their patient communication was good. And we also interviewed 2,000 patients coming out of the consultations and found that the patients still thought they had the skills to listen and talk to them. So they're still performing on stage. Mm. Uh, stay there one moment, if you will. Dr. Pritt Butar is a GP from Abingdon. Dr. Pritt joins us on the telephone as well this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you heading for burnout? <laughs> you know, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating question, isn't it? And just like everybody else, GPs come in all shapes and sizes. Um, I fear or, or hope that I am at the sort of um, uh, absurdly cheerful, optimistic end of the spectrum. And consequently, I would say, no, I'm not heading for burnout. But I would certainly recognize um, some of the things that have just been described. Um, I've been here in Abingdon for 11 years now. And I would say the intensity and complexity of my work in, that, in just those 11 years, let alone a longer career, has changed beyond recognition. And that brings its own pressures. Yes. I want to investigate this phrase because I've never heard of it before. Doctors becoming depersonalized. According to Dr. Peter Orton, who you've just heard, mm. this means they're becoming, they're still on stage performing, to use his phrase, and I like it, so I will. Yeah. Uh, but they're becoming insensitive, unfeeling, and more callous. I think some of that may reflect the change um, in the sort of pressures under which we work. So I'm very aware that compared to 20, 21 years ago when I first became a GP, I, I probably think in a, um, another, another expression that, that you might want to ponder is I probably think in a slightly more defensive manner. So when I'm uh, talking to a patient, rather than uh, thinking, oh, I think this patient has X, I'm thinking more in terms of, well, they might have something more serious, and if I miss that, what are the consequences, etc. So, as a result, um, I think, you know, if, if you go back, if you turn the clock back maybe 20, 30 years, you would have gone to see your GP, he would have, you know, had a feel of your belly if you had some belly ache, and he'd have said to you with, you know, a fair degree of confidence, well, I think you have X or Y, and wouldn't have necessarily have discussed the alternatives. These days, people want to know what, what other options might be. They'll probably have done a lot of research themselves, quite appropriate. And as a result, the conversation is perhaps less... Um, 
overtly reassuring than it might have been 20 or 30 years ago. And I can see how some people, uh, you know, many people may well perceive that as the person perhaps being slightly colder, slightly more detached, um, and even slightly more ambivalent. But, I, but I, you know, I don't necessarily see this as a good or bad thing. It just reflects the whole change in the nature of general practice. Uh, Dr. Peter Orton, you heard there Dr. Prit Bhutta, he's a GP from Abingdon. He's not so much depersonalised as defensive. Do you understand what he means? Yes, I think so. It's a continuum, this. Um, and what this study is showing that quite a lot of people are worn out or tired, but it's beginning to affect their perception and feelings for people. But more importantly in this study, we found particular groups of GPs were at more risk of depersonalization. We found in particular male doctors and also those who have been in practice less than 20 years and in group practices. So there's probably, a, a, as you go into practice longer and longer, you develop coping strategies and mechanisms and you start to practice according to what's realistic about it. But at the end of the day, we found the generic GP's communication skills were still maintained. Okay, how big a problem do you think this is, Peter? I think it is a, it's a big problem. I think it's, there's a personal distress in GPs. We did external measures of performance by patients and recordings, but if you talk to GPs, you may find internally self-reported concern with their performance may start to become effective. And I think the impact on this is personal distress, but on manpower, colleagues will maybe be more likely to go part-time, retire early, or become ill. Okay, Prit Buttar. Uh, personal distress, are you seeing this amongst your colleagues more and more, do you think, finally? Well, one of the roles I have is that I work for an organisation called the Local Medical Committee, which represents GPs, and I do see um, a lot of... Uh, I see a lot of tension amongst my colleagues. I see them quite often looking burnt out, for want of a better word. It causes tensions within practices. You can imagine it. It causes disputes, and the local medical committee sometimes gets involved in these. I think I do see it. I think what I would... Yeah. And again, I, I, I hesitate to say this a little bit because as I started uh, by saying, I tend to be from the sort of optimistic, cheerful end of the spectrum. My, my worry would be that I see exactly the same sorts of trends in so many of my patients. Um, only this morning um, I saw a, a lovely patient who's a, a local teacher and, you know, her description of the changes in her working environment, the additional stresses under which she works, you know, you could just, it could have, she could have been talking about medicine. And I, I see this as, in a way, it's not a problem that's unique to medicine. I see this as, if you like, just one of the malaises of our times. Great speaking to you, Prit. I know we've interrupted your surgery, so you're free to go now. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah, that's very interesting, though, Peter. So Prit's at, in at the sharp end. He's actually in surgery today. He's seeing people today. But that's uh, straight from the horse's mouth. Did you hear everything you expected to hear from our Abingdon GP there? Yes, I think that's fairly typical. Um, I think we just mustn't lose sight of the fact that it is a very rewarding job. Uh, end of the day, caring for people is rewarding. And there's a lot of good in general practice. I think what this study is raising awareness um, amongst my GP colleagues in particular that um, we need to look after ourselves and plan and take steps not only personally but within our group practices to make stress and burnout more topical, more something you can talk with in teams and start to share and put in place um, a reduction having been come aware of it now okay we've talked a lot this morning peter finally about doctors but what about us patients should we be going to a surgery and when the doctor asks us how are you we should reply never mind me how are you are we being affected by this insensitivity this feeling of unfeeling this more callous nature um, amongst some doctors this and i'll use the phrase again depersonalization how are the patients being affected finally um well the study shown that we measured uh, recorded nearly 800 consultations with patients and we found patient centeredness which is that empathy the interest in the patient rather than a doctor-centered consultation was still very much there it didn't get affected um, I think GPs try and care 
and of still maintaining this performance on stage. They're still doing it. I think ultimately there are going to be times when you're tired and exhausted that you may not take all the cues in. You may not um, be aware of psychological issues. Um, and it could well have an effect on the performance. Um, but by and large, the GPs are doing very well and doing a very difficult job. Although patients can pick it up, you know, we do understand that doctors are under stress but we can also pick up i think i might be wrong people will tell me if i am we can pick it up when we feel that a doctor isn't really interested in us doesn't really care i think yes patients are aware particularly with non-verbal communication which is the majority of communication initially um, you can establish very in a, within 20 seconds of how the consultation is going. I think you can become aware. It's a matter of trying to share it, work together in partnership with your doctor. And there's also times that are better times to see. Sometimes your problem may need more time with the doctor. Um, it's becoming aware and patients are aware of doctors who are not necessarily listening to communication and will try and either present a different way or may go and see a colleague. Dr. Peter Orton, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. How about that? Fascinating stuff. Uh, so I'll ask the